Hello everyone, Jonathan here from Triple M Games, and in this video we're going to be making objects glow with an emission shader and object color, vertex color, and just a regular color. So let's get started. I have a cube, I have a point light, and a camera. We're going to open up a side window here, and this is going to be the shader editor. I'm going to press the N key to hide the side panel, and zoom in here. And we could use the principled BSDF, which we're going to do first. I'm also going to press the N key over here in the 3D viewport. Press the T key to hide the tools, and that gives us a bit more. Uh, I'm also going to scroll over here and set us into rendered view. Select our cube. And we're going to go to add input. And this is going to be object info. Now we have color. I'm going to put the color into the base color, and I'm also going to drag the color into the emission. You'll notice that our object is slightly glowing. Uh, make sure that the bloom is also checked with uh, these settings. If you want things to be a little bit more intense, you could change the intensity, or you could also change the radius of the bloom. I normally like to have it around 5 or 4 for the radius, and change the threshold up to maybe 1. I'm just going to hover and press the backspace. Now if you go into the object data, scroll down to viewport display, and you can change the color, and it will adjust both the object material color and the emission color. Now we also have the emission strength here. If you turn it down to zero, you won't get any emission strength. And if you turn it way up, then you get this really bright color. Uh, usually I don't go that high, Usually I just stick with 8. Now if we don't like the base color to be the same, then you can just set it to white. And it'll glow just like that. Maybe we want to see it a bit better in this case, so I'm going to go into the world settings. I'm going to get rid of my HDR. And I'm just going to set it to black. Also I'm going to hide the world view. And we now have uh, an emissive cube. If I shift D and X and duplicate that over, I'm going to press shift and R to repeat that last step. And go into the object data, change this to like a red, which is just a hue of zero. And we can change this to maybe a green. And turn this to a blue. So that gave us the power to adjust objects based on their color. Now this is great until you want to fuse them together. So if I select all three of them and I hold Control and press J, you'll notice that they will all go to the same object color as the active object. So sometimes this doesn't work out very good. So I'm just going to press Control and Z to undo. And in this other case, we're going to use vertex color. So I'm going to press X and delete the object info. Go over to Add, Input, and Attribute. And we're going to use color. Stick that into the emission. And we're going to go into vertex data. Go into color attributes. Click the plus icon, and we're going to go with color, and that'll be fine. Click OK. And notice that the other ones don't have that, so I'm going to shift select these two and select the object that has the color property. And then we're just going to press Control J, and that links everything together. And I'm going to go over into Vertex Paint. And then I'm going to select Faces, and I go into Edit Mode, hold Alt and press A to deselect everything, hover your mouse cursor over an object, and press the L key. Go back into Vertex Paint, go to Paint, and set Vertex Colors. Go into Object Mode, and we're also going to change this to Color. 
So everything is going to be white because we didn't really select a color. Go back to Vertex Paint, change the color to red, and go to Paint, Set Vertex Color. You can go back into Edit Mode, hold Alt and A to deselect everything, select your next object, press the L key, go back into Vertex Paint, change the color to a green, and paint, set vertex color, go back in edit mode, alt, a, hover, l key, go back in the vertex paint, change the color to blue, and paint. And notice that they are all one object right now, so we can go into edit mode. You can press the P key and you can do selection by material or by loose parts. We can just do by loose parts. And now we have three different objects, but they're all sharing the last object's origin. So I'm going to shift and select all of them, press the right mouse button, set origin, and origin to geometry. And now we have three different cubes. This material can be used on any object. Now you can join them together later, or you can leave them separate. It's probably best to assign it to objects before actually needing to join them or whatever. We didn't have to, we could have just added a color attribute and color and set the attribute to color and geometry. And you have that set into the emission with emission strength of eight. And same thing, you can plug that into the base color if you want. Then you have the full color of your vertex colors. Now most of the time you probably won't want to have the colors all the same, or you might want to have some variation, some texture. To simulate that, I'm going to move this over to the side, I'm going to hold control and right mouse button, and release, and that will cut the line going into the base color. I'm going to add, and this is going to be a texture, I'm going to use a magic texture. And I'm just going to move that over to the left. Then we're going to add color, mix RGB. I'm going to plug the color into the bottom color, set this one to black, set the factor into the factor of the mix RGB, and plug that directly into the base color. There's a possibility we might not see anything there, so I'm also going to hold control, right mouse button and that will sever the emission. Plug the mix RGB into the emission color, and we should be seeing something different. So that gives us a little bit of control over this. And maybe that can give you some ghostly effects to add to your objects. But most of the time you'll probably use an image texture. And one thing I like to do is mix multiple masks together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over to the left. I'm going to select the mix. RGB, and Shift D, move that over. I'm going to hold Control and right mouse button, and just remove that. Drag that back into the emission color. And now we're going to add in another texture. So add texture. I'm going to go with noise texture. Drag the factor into the factor. Uh, then we'll just scale that down. We're not getting much of a view on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ramp this up. I'm going to go to Add, Converter, Color Ramp. And just attach that in between there. I'm going to set the interpolation to Ease. And then we'll raise the black value. And we'll raise the white value. That just gives us a little bit nicer of a transition. And now you can adjust the scale. 
can also adjust the detail. Can adjust the roughness. Give it a little bit of a distortion. And now you have some variation on what kind of color you have. I'm also going to set this color down to black, I think. Yeah. Now we have kind of an interesting effect. Now, as you can see, we have a quick way to make a texture that can repeat over different objects. If we wanted to change this, I can Shift D, press X, and move that over. I'm going to hold Shift and press S. Cursor to selected. We're going to go into edit mode. And I'm going to select everything with A, and then press X to delete vertices. And then we're going to go to Add, and Cylinder, go back into Object Mode, right click, and Shade Auto Smooth. This is in the newest release of Blender 3.3.1 Stable. And there we go. Just going to move that over there a bit. And that gives us a pretty neat effect that we can add to all objects. I'm pressing uh, hold control and press the space bar. Uh, that just changes full screen wherever your mouse is hovering over. One fun thing we can do is also add it into the alpha. So let's drag the mix RGB all the way into the alpha. And we probably won't see anything change. So let's go into the Material Properties, scroll all the way down till we see Settings tab, and we're going to change the Blend Mode to Alpha Blend. We're also going to turn Shadow Mode to Alpha Clip, and turn off Show Back Faces. And now we should have Transparency. In some cases, sometimes this effect doesn't quite work properly, uh, this seems to work for us right now, but what you can also do is change the alpha to alpha clip. And majority of the time, that always seems to work. This might be better for plants or something like that, but for now, this is pretty cool. Might have to adjust these values a little bit here. depending on what effect you're wanting to go for, this might work for you. I've used this effect for like alien blood, where all I have to do is, sorry about that, let's see here, I'm gonna press and hold shift and press S, and cursor to world origin, I'm gonna press shift and A, add mesh, plane, and then we'll just move this over here, Uh, and notice that uh, the point light is casting a shadow on the ground. And that is thanks to using the clip effect for the shadows. I'm going to hold Alt and press A, and then Shift and A again, Mesh and Plane. We're going to press G and Z, and then just move it to where it's just above the plane, and we'll move that over here. I'm not going to see much of anything because it's the same color as the floor plane. We are going to add in the material, which we might as well change that to glow material. And that kind of gives us a uh, almost a decal. But if we go into edit mode, and I'm going to right-click and subdivide. 
And we're just going to change that to maybe five. I'm going to select this corner over here, add on proportional editing. And then I'm going to press G and then I'm going to hold shift and press Z. And then we can adjust the radius with the mouse wheel. And that just gives us a little bit more interest to our blood splat or decal, whatever, whatever we want this to be. And there we go. Ah, maybe instead of alien blood, we want this to be more of a lava effect. We can change our mix RGB color that goes from the magic texture. Uh, we'll just give it a little bit more red, a bit of green, turn down the blue. Oh, and there we go. We've got some kind of a lava effect. Uh, I really want it to be more bright and shiny. So for the emission, we're going to add color, brightness, and contrast. Then we're going to increase the brightness. And increase the contrast. That should give us a really interesting glowing lava effect. And maybe we don't like the, uh, the shine on this. So I'm going to go into the material properties. Or I can go over to the principled BSDF here. And I like changing the roughness to 0.9. That kind of helps. And that's basically it for the different methods I have currently for object color and emission stuffs. And this concludes this video. Hopefully this gives you some idea on how to make glowing objects. Uh, of course this method could be replaced with a texture that you hand paint. That way you could control where you want the glowing effect to be based on an image texture or other things like that. Just remember that black values don't emit light and white values is full brightness. Any color in between uh, also emits light, but some colors not as much as others. Thank you for watching and have a good day.